Listening to instruction is the title of this lesson. Before we get started, would you bow with me? Gracious and Holy Father, we thank you so much for this day. We're thankful so much for the opportunities to teach your word and to instruct your word. We pray, Father, that you'll help us to live your word out in our life. Bless us with wisdom. Help us to do what's right always in every situation. Bless our children. Help them to always live for you and always look to your word for guidance. Thank you for your love and your grace and compassion towards us. Forgive us of our sins, for it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The book of Proverbs is dealing with practical, godly living. Most of them are from Solomon uh, to uh, his son. There are others by others, other writers in the book of Proverbs, but most of them are, are, are Proverbs of Solomon. Solomon was blessed with an extraordinary uh, measure of wisdom, probably the wisest man who ever walked the earth besides Christ. Christ would be the wisest. But Solomon was very wise. His wisdom made him famous. People from all over came to hear the wisdom of Solomon. Uh, Queen of Sheba came to hear his wisdom and said the half has not been told about the wisdom of Solomon. Uh, But, of course, he made some unwise choices in his life, uh, marrying women that were against the law of Moses to marry. They turned his heart away from the Lord uh, because he started compromising with them and building idolatrous shrines to please them. And um, I do hope that towards the end of his life he repented of those sins The book of Ecclesiastes seems to indicate that he did wise up and realize the wrong direction he went. Wisdom, as we said in our lesson, is the proper application of knowledge. You can have knowledge about something and not have the wisdom to carry it out. How many people know of people in the workplace or in other situations that are smart Book smart, but they couldn't open a door without someone helping them. They, they, they would get lost in a big room like this without guidance. They got, they're smart, but they don't have wisdom. Then you have people who don't have an education according to the worldly standards, whether a college degree or what. They don't have a whole lot of book learning. But they have wisdom. They have wisdom. They know life lessons. They know due to experience and and the things that they've gone through how to handle certain situations. It's great when both of those can be combined. Where You're very smart and very wise. Oftentimes that's not always the case. But those are not things that are mutually exclusive of one another. They should go together. Proverbs chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. To know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to perceive the instruction of wisdom, justice, judgment, and equity. Verse 4. To give prudence to the simple, and to the young man knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and increase learning, And a man of understanding will attain wise counsel to understand a proverb and an enigma, the words of the wise and their riddles. Verse 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. My son, hear the instruction of your father and do not forsake the law of your mother, for they will be graceful ornaments on your head and chains about your neck. He's talking about wisdom and instruction and how that we need to increase in it in this context here. A a wise man, verse 5, will hear and increase learning. You know, we never stop learning. 
And when, when people say that this is all I want to learn and I don't want to learn anymore, they, 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 they cut themselves off from the blessings of learning more. And if we, be, we become complacent and satisfied with what we know, we'd never get any better. And I've met members of the church who know the fundamentals of how to become a Christian, the, the one church and worship, and that's it. They don't move beyond that. They would never go to a denomination. They would never worship with instruments. Uh, they would insist on doing the fundamental things. But when it comes to other things, they've not increased beyond that. They're stuck in the fundamentals because they won't move on uh, to learning more. Well, the Bible tells us to, to continue to learn, increase our learning. Uh, verse uh, 5, and um, we will... Seek out wise counsel. Look at verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Why is that the beginning of knowledge? The fear of the Lord. All true knowledge stems from and is based upon the acknowledgement of the existence of God and respect for His will. All true knowledge is based upon that. That's why throughout human history, the great scientific discoveries have been people of faith. Not always Christian according to New Testament teaching, but people who at least on a fundamental level believed in the Bible as the Word of God and believed in a creator. Almost, I mean, you just name the, the famous scientists and philosophers throughout history, the people that have made discoveries. They were people who believed in a creator. They, they, they believed in the Bible being the Word of God and would openly say they believe in it. They were not ashamed one bit to admit in the belief of God. Hebrews 11 and verse 6 tells us that without faith it's impossible to please God. For he who comes to him must believe that he exists. That's what the English Standard Version says. You must believe that he exists, that he is, and he's a rewarder of those who seek him. So we must believe in the existence of God and we must reverence this God. That's the beginning point of true knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. Psalm 14 and verse 1, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. So when you start off with that philosophy, you come up with foolishness like the Big Bang, macroevolution, which is life all evolved over billions of years, somehow it got started on a primeval earth billions of years ago and uh, that's, that's what fools come up with they despise the wisdom and instruction of the word of God and they come up with their own instruction but look at verse 8 and 9 this parents this is on us to teach our children my son hear the instruction of your father and do not forsake the law of your mother why it's going to be valuable to you verse 9 for they will be graceful ornament on your neck and chains about your, on your head and chains about your neck. Later on, it's going to talk about the value of it being far above rubies and gold and riches. We should value wisdom. It's very, very valuable, both in this life and certainly in the life to come. But look at verse 20. Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 20. Verses 20 through 33 is very interesting. Here's what happens when we don't listen to wisdom, when we don't listen to instruction. Wisdom calls aloud, and its wisdom is oftentimes in the book of Proverbs personified as a woman. She raises her voice in the open square. She cries out in the chief uh, concourses. And at the opening of the gates in the city, she speaks her words. How long will you simple ones, will you love simplicity? For scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. Turn at my rebuke. 
Surely I will pour out my spirit on you. I will make my words known to you. Because I have called and you refused, I have stretched out my hand and no one regarded. Because you disdained all of my counsel and would have none of my rebuke, I will laugh at your calamity. I will mock you when your terror comes. When your terror comes like a storm and your destruction comes like a whirlwind, when distress and anguish come upon you. Verse 28, Then you will call on me, but I will not answer. Then you will seek me diligently, but will not find me. Because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They would have none of my counsel and despised my every rebuke. Therefore they shall eat the fruit of their own way and be filled with the full with their own fancies. For the turning away of the simple will slay them and the complacency of fools will destroy them. But whoever listens to me will dwell safely and will be secure without fear of evil. What's that saying? Sum that up in ten words or less. <laughs> Basically, that's correct. If you have wisdom, you're, you're going to, again, the, the practical commands and instructions of God in your life will be carried out you're going to listen to God's word. You're going to take heed to the warnings. And it's going to be a good thing. It's going to benefit you. Now, many people graduate this time of year. What are, what are some of the number one dangers teenagers face in our society that people even of the world warn them about? Do what? Drinking and driving, things like that. That the wise individual is not going to be involved in those things because of the danger that's involved. They're not going to go down that path. Not to mention the the problems with, with drinking, that it leads in and of itself, plus it's a gateway drug to other drugs. And that's why schools will have somebody come out and talk about the dangers of it. And the wisdom, wisdom is crying out saying, don't do that. Don't involve yourself in that behavior. Don't even get started in it. And if people listen to it, then there is a likelihood they're going to be dwelling safely. They're, there's going, to, they're going to have security. They're not going to find themselves going down a path that, that leads to destruction. How many people have, have in their hospital bed regretted not listening to warnings? I should have listened to my parents. I should have listened to my parents when they told me not to get involved with that group over there. I should have listened. See, wisdom is crying out. And, and, and she... That is, wisdom is, is saying, you've got to listen to me now while you have an opportunity before you go down that path, because once you go down that path and find yourself in trouble, she, she says, I'm going to laugh at your calamity. I am going to mock you when your terror comes. How many people have found themselves in a, a, a situation where they can't be baptized, and they look back and they said, I should have been baptized when I had all those opportunities. And they can't now. They're, they're, they're in some sort of situation where it's too late. They ignored God all their life. See, that's why it's, it's important for us to every day listen to the instruction of God's word and not to, to disregard it. Listening to instruction, we've got to have it because faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God, Romans 10 and verse 17. And that's why it's important to have the young people that we have here to listen and have things like family Bible school to teach them and to have parents at home that will instruct them. 
we have a good crop of young people growing up in this congregation. They have an opportunity to see how New Testament Christianity is practiced, not diluted, not watered down, not being compromised with anybody. And so I'm just very hopeful by, about our young people and very encouraged uh, by them and by the families that are here. Look at Proverbs chapter 4. Verses 1 through 13. Again, the admonition to listen to the instructions. Proverbs chapter 4, beginning in verse 1. Hear, my children, the instruction of your father, and give attention to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine. Do not forsake my law. Listen to the words of your parents, your parents who are teaching you the instruction of the word. You listen to them. Fathers, you don't provoke your children to anger, but you bring them up in the nurture and admonition, the discipline of the Lord. Hebrews, excuse me, Ephesians 6 says, I give you good doctrine and do not forsake my law. Verse 3, when I was my father's son, tender and the only one in the sight of my mother, he also taught me and said to me, let your heart retain my words and keep my commands and live. Get wisdom, get understanding, and do not forget, nor turn away from the words of my mouth. He says, I was taught these things. Of course, we know uh, David taught Solomon. And so this is to be taught and be passed on from generation to generation. You know, on our children, we're going to have the most influence on. Then as time goes on, we'll have some influence on our grandchildren. Then if we see our great-grandchildren, we'll have a little bit. But the ones we're going to have the most impact on is our children. And that's why we need to be busy, fathers taking the lead in instructing the children in the way of the Lord. Let your heart retain my words, keep my commands, and live forever. My heart. Describe for me the heart. Oftentimes in the book of Proverbs and throughout the Bible, it talks about the heart. Give me a definition of the heart. The what? Your intellect, your mind, your emotion, your consciousness, which includes your emotions, your reasoning, your volition, your will. And so most often than not, you've got to look at the context, most often than not, when the Bible is talking about the heart, it's talking about your mind, it's not talking about your blood pump. Talking about your mind. Let your heart retain my words. And so, uh, the word heart is an all-encompassing word because it not only deals with the mind, the intellect, but also the emotions. We're to love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, and mind. That's the first commandment. That means with everything that our intellect, our emotions, our, our will, everything that we are, a living sacrifice, Romans 12, verse 1 and 2, we're to love God. So we're to listen to this instruction from our heart, retain these words in my heart, keep my words and live. Now this is not only talking about biological life, but it's talking about spiritual life. It's talking about spiritual life ultimately. You listen to these commands, you keep my commands, and you'll live. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Do not forget nor turn away from the words of my mouth. You see, we have to be instructed. We're not born with the programming. We have to have input into our minds, our hearts, God's will. We have to be taught it. Do not forsake her. She will uh, preserve you, love you, and she will keep you. Again, personifying wisdom as a woman. She won't forsake you. If you 
are determined to do what's right, she won't forsake you. She will preserve you, love you, and she will keep you. Verse 7, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and all you're getting, get understanding. Now, why, why is that? Why is he saying that in verse 7? Why is that the principal thing? What now? Right. If you don't look for it, you don't find it. And without it, knowledge, again... What if you memorize the Bible from cover to cover? You know you could, like that, find a scripture. But you don't live it. You don't live it. It's worthless. There are atheists that can quote the Bible. They've studied the Bible from cover to cover. They know it. They could quote it. Probably more so than some Christians. But they, they reject it. They know it but they don't have faith. Yeah, Satan. Satan knows the scriptures. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, it's like in, in teaching children, sometimes they may not understand why the parents are saying, no, don't go play out in the street. They may not understand that till later on. But if you don't tell them not to go play in the street, they'll go play in it and they could get hurt or killed. And so they have to respect the authority of the parents even though they don't fully understand that, and Maya's going through the stage of why. Why? And sometimes we explain it to her, and sometimes we just emphasize because we said. And that's all that matters at this point. You know, we, you know she needs to understand when an instruction is given by those in authority, you do it. You may not fully understand why. But you do it because we no more than she does. Now, God knows much more than we do. So we need to listen to His Word and not ask why, you know. Why do I have to be dipped in water to be saved? Why? Well, God said to do it. it, it well, why? Couldn't He save me some other way? God said to do it. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Why almost is a prideful thing. Because it's saying, unless I fully understand it, I'm not going to do it. It's almost a defiant thing. If it, if, it, if it gets to the point where it keeps a person from doing it, unless they fully understand it. Right. Right. And that's where that knowledge as they mature grows into understanding and this wisdom that they can act out that started with the fear of the authority or respect for the authority that grew. Exactly. I mean there there's that fear there, that respect, that reverence towards authority, then later on a, a fuller understanding. Back to our text here in uh Verse 8, here's what wisdom will do, or what we should do with wisdom. Verse 8, exalt her and she will promote you. She will bring you honor when you embrace her. She will place on your head an ornament of grace 
and the crown of glory she will deliver to you. It's going to be something that's going to bring a great reward to embrace, to listen to, to implement wisdom in our life. Verse 10, Hear my son and receive my sayings, and the years of your life will be many. I have taught you in the way of wisdom. I have led you in right paths. When you walk, your steps will not be hindered, and when you run, you will not stumble. Take firm hold of instruction and do not let go. Keep her, for she is your life. Again, emphasizing this is going to help you later on in life. And going along with the whole understanding thing, trying to explain to your children, I I spank you because I love you. (laughs) Trying to get that message across to them. They won't won't understand it right now fully. Later on, they will. I didn't understand it. But later on, you understand it. Yes, my parents love me enough to whoop my rear end because I needed it. My children right now, they don't fully understand that. And I guarantee you, Gwen's going to need a whole lot more spankings than the other two combined. She is a little firecracker. She won't understand it till later on. But we're going to emphasize that this is an act of love. What we're doing is out of love. And uh, <clears throat> that's why parents need to watch themselves and condition themselves that they don't punish out of anger. That can become abusive. And that, that's wrong. And uh, that's why we have to control ourselves, get a hold of ourselves, calm ourselves down, then say, okay, let's go deal with the problem. Look at Proverbs chapter 8. The value of wisdom is better than all the riches of the world. If you were to give a survey to to people and say, which would you rather have? Uh, $10 billion tax-free or wisdom? What do you think most people would choose? The money. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 10 and 11. Receive my instruction and not silver, and knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies, and all the things one may desire cannot be compared with her. Why is that the case? Why would having wisdom and instruction from God's will be more valuable than riches? Exactly, exactly what Jesus said on on the Sermon on the Mount. You uh, lay up for yourself treasure in heaven that's incorruptible. You invest in heaven, in that retirement plan that's out of this world, that'll never go away, that is better than all the riches that mankind could come up with you think about from the beginning of human history until now cannot compare with the glories and the beauty and the grandeur of heaven. And it'll never get old. It'll never grow old. We'll never get bored with it. It'll be forever. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Exactly. Solomon wanted wisdom to govern such a great people, and God blessed him with wisdom and riches and became probably one of the richest persons, percentage-wise, that ever walked the earth. Um, Israel was at its height during his reign. And so he understands the value of, of materialism. If you, if you want to know anyone in the Bible that understands what it means to be rich, you look at Solomon, and then you read the book of Ecclesiastes, and he says it's a waste of time without God. It's like grasping for the wind. Exactly. And that's part of the whole wisdom and instruction. If you gain the whole world and you lose your own soul, you lose your own soul. 
What will you give in exchange for your soul? Your soul is the most valuable thing that you can that you have as your person because uh, you will last forever somewhere. And, and we have to think about that. So the, the spiritual value of, uh, that, that can only come from instruction and wisdom is more valuable than, uh, than rubies, choice gold, and silver. And that's what we need to emphasize to our children. And, and so many kind of fall short in this area because they emphasize going to school, getting a good education, pursuing a good career, but they neglect the spiritual. And they emphasize that so much that, that their children are willing to stay home and do homework when the church is assembling. Uh, they're willing to, little, oh, my child has a school project. We can't come on Sunday night. And so what are you teaching your child? Your child's education and the pursuit of a career, which is the pursuit of material things, is more important than spiritual things. That's what is being instilled within that child. So we need to think about those things. We need to consider the value of of the spiritual over the material. Because what's going to happen to the material? It'll be burned up. One time there was a gospel preacher flying in the plane of a wealthy member of the church. He was not a faithful member of the church, but he took him up in his plane and he saw all this acreage. He says, brother, you see all this acreage? He said, all that as far as you can see is mine. He said, what do you think about that? The preacher said, one day God's going to burn it up. One day God's going to burn it up. Puts things in perspective. Proverbs chapter 8. Proverbs chapter 8, verses 32 through 36. Now therefore listen to me, my children, for blessed are those who keep my ways. Hear instruction and be wise and do not disdain it. Blessed is the man who listens to me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the post of my doors. For whoever finds me finds life and obtains favor with God. But he who sins against me wrongs his own soul All those who hate me love death. So here again, Solomon or Solomon is talking about wisdom and personifying wisdom as a woman. Said, "Listen to me, hear my instruction. Don't disdain me. Blessed is the one who listens to me and watches daily at my gates, waiting at the post of my door." What is verse thirty-four talking about? What would go on in the gates of a city? And at the door of a person's house. You have the elders oftentimes sitting at the gates of the city. What would they be doing there? A lot of business transaction would go on at the gate of the city. The gate of a city was oftentimes like the town square in our society. In old, old, older towns that have the town square, you have the courthouse right in the middle of the town. A lot of business transaction would go on there. Well, in, in, a, in a walled city, that kind of thing would go on at the gate of the city. Business transaction, everyday life. So he's talking about here, blessed is the man who listens to me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the post of my door. This is practical application in everyday life. You can use this. This this will help you in every aspect of your life. And when you study the principles of the Bible when it comes to ethics, when it comes to behavior, it will benefit every facet, corner, and everything of your life. It will permeate every facet of your life and improve it. You'll be a better Son, daughter, father, mother, wife, husband. You'll be a better worker, co-worker, boss, citizen. It will improve you from top to bottom in every aspect of your life. So there is that practical application of how it permeates everything you do. Verse 35 and 38, 6. Whoever finds me, that's talking about wisdom, finds life and obtains favor from the Lord. 
we listen to God's will, we're going to find life, of course, eternal life, and we'll have favor from the Lord. But, in contrast to that, he who sins against me sins against his own soul, and all who hate me love death. You know, when we sin, we ultimately are sinning against ourselves. It is a self-destructive behavior to sin. No matter what sin it is. It matters not what the sin may be. From murder, rape, or just a little white lie. Which there's no such thing. That's a sin against our soul. That hurts us. It's a self-destructive behavior. And all those who hate me love death. If you hate wisdom, if you hate the word of God, you love death. Of course, that's spiritual death. Ultimately, separation from God. Proverbs chapter 9. Proverbs chapter 9, verses 7 through 9. The value of rebuke. Proverbs 9, 7 through 9. He who corrects a scoffer gets shame for himself, and he who rebukes a wicked man only harms himself. Do not correct a scoffer lest he hate you. Rebuke a wise man, and he will love you. Give instruction to a wise man, and he will be wiser, still wiser. Teach a just man, and he will increase in learning. Here's the different attitudes of those who receive rebuke and receive instruction. First of all, what's a scoffer? A disbeliever, it's someone who openly mocks uh, religion and, and, and God and the Bible, things like that. That's a scoffer. Uh, if you try to correct a person like that, that you have shame for yourself. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I've been cussed and said all kind of terrible things when I've tried to reason with atheists. Their wicked mindset. I mean, just the foulest language that you could ever imagine just comes your way. Uh, and they start blaspheming God and Jesus and the Bible. You rebuke a wicked man, it only harms himself. He who rebukes a wicked man only harms himself because uh, they're not going to receive it. They don't care, and they're going to lash out at you. Uh, verse 8, do not correct a scoffer lest he hate you. Rebuke a wise man and he will love you. Here's the difference in, in the mindset. A wise individual will receive rebuke because they want to better themselves. They want to better themselves. And rebuke is constructive criticism. That's what rebuke is. Part of the work of the preacher is to reprove and rebuke. That's constructive criticism. And when a person has a mindset of wanting to be, um, wanting to uh, improve themselves, they're going to love you for saying something. They're going to appreciate you for correcting them. You come to them, you rebuke them. Thank you so much. I was not aware of that. I, or, I, I did not. I did not know that. And so we we should be. Uh, the recipients of rebuke in a way that denotes that we're a wise person because we want it. And we should love the one who loved us enough to correct us. I don't know that. That could be a, a true. The, the Hebrew might show a distinction. Because in the New King James Version, verse 7 says, You cor correct a scoffer, you get shame for himself. You rebuke a wicked man, you only harm yourself. Do not correct a scoffer, but you rebuke a wise man. I, I don't know if there's a different Hebrew word for correct and rebuke. I'd have to look that up. 
but there might be something to that. Uh, but the wise person will receive uh, instruction. Didn't, didn't Jesus rebuke? Didn't He say to Peter, Get behind me, Satan? You know not the things of God. When, it, when Peter was saying, You can't go to Jerusalem and get killed? No, we can't, we're not going to let that happen. Jesus said, Get behind me, Satan. Paul had to go to Peter and rebuke him to his face. Galatians chapter 2 for his hypocrisy. And he loved him for it. He appreciated that. Give instruction to a wise man and he will be still wiser. He, he wants to improve himself. Teach a man, uh, teach a just man, and he will increase his learning. Because you know what? The just man, the wise man, is humble. You've got to be humble to be able to be taught. There have been times when I worked with people in the past, when I worked at General Motors, we would get a new officer there in the security department. The officers who thought they knew everything because they worked at another a security firm, you couldn't teach them anything. You know what? Unless they humbled themselves, they didn't last long because they couldn't be taught. They couldn't. They they were too smart to be taught in their own mind. But those who were humble enough to receive instruction, they did very well, and they were a benefit to the security department. But you get someone in there that's a know-it-all. They know it all. And someone with a know-it-all attitude cannot be instructed. It takes humility to be able to receive instruction. Look at Proverbs 10 and verse 17. Our time is quickly running out. Proverbs 10 and verse 17. He who keeps instruction is in the way of life, but he who refuses correction goes astray. You keep instruction, you're in the way of life. And of course, the Bible always instructs us and corrects us and makes sure that we're on course. But if you refuse correction, you go astray. It's sad that people seek out churches that won't correct them. They seek out congregations that will not rebuke them. And that shouldn't be. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 15 and 16. Proverbs 12, verse 15 and 16. This is a fool. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he who heeds counsel is wise. A fool's wrath is known at once, but a prudent man covers shame. So a fool is the opposite of the wise. And so the fool is right in his own eyes. What they do, they see as right in their own eyes. Self-righteous, they can't be told they're wrong, they know it all. But he who heeds counsel is wise. You listen. You listen to the Word of God. What does verse 16 mean? A fool's wrath is known at once, but a prudent man covers shame. What does that mean? What does a fool have oftentimes? Outburst of wrath. They are not restrained at all in their, um, in their anger. That's, that's a fool. They just, they just they lash out um, uh, angrily. What is that, Proverbs 14, 17? A quick-tempered man acts foolishly, and a man of wicked intention is hated. And what, what other verse? 29. He who is slow to wrath has great understanding, but he who is impulsive exalts folly. And that goes all, all with that. That's very good. That goes with verse 16, Proverbs 12 and verse 16. A fool, they act out of their emotion because they are in the flesh. When you're in the flesh, you act on the impulse of your flesh. You're mad, I'm going, to, I'm going to show it, I'm going to tell everybody around me. It's outburst, outburst of wrath. 
but the prudent man covers his shame. What's, what's the opposite of out of control? Self-control. A prudent man covers his shame. They're under control. They're, 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 they, put, they, they rein themselves in. Sometimes that's hard to do. It's hard to do. Look at Proverbs uh, 13 and verse 1. Then the lesson will be ours to take home with us. Proverbs 13 and verse 1. A wise son heeds his father's instruction, but a scoffer does not listen to rebuke. Listening to the, the father's instruction. Listening to the instruction of the godly parents who are trying to teach the children in the ways of godliness is uh, part of what we're looking at here as we look at the book of Proverbs and listening to instruction. We've always got to be ready to humble ourselves and say, I did not know that. We cannot approach the Bible with saying, I, uh, you know, there's nothing more I can learn. I've learned everything there is. That's just not the case. We learn, we improve ourselves, and a lot of this uh, learning has to do with practical application in life. Here's what how we carry it out in life, how we to approach these things, wisdom and understanding when it comes to uh, certain things. Uh, how do you carry it out when you go to the election booth to vote for a candidate? There's wisdom there. How do you evaluate who you're going to vote for? There's wisdom there. How are you going to evaluate making a purchase of something? Do you really need this thing? Or is it just a desire? Is it going to put you into debt unnecessarily? Or is it something that is necessary? You've got to weigh those options. We don't want to be found to be fools. We want to be wise. All right, remember tonight, 7 o'clock. they got 10 more minutes back in the back. 7 o'clock uh, tonight for worship.